Hi there guys, today we're going to talk about some possibilities to start a painting. Many people they like to start with a drawing, to get composition etc. Uh, some people start immediately with paint. Now to make a drawing first there are very different possibilities. First of all of course there's a graphite pencil. With a graphite pencil of course um, we can make a sketch. And you don't need much more than this. Um, what I see also is that people tend to make a complete, a complete uh, a shadow and light image of, for example, a portrait. And they're already filling in with their pencil all these dark shades, etc. This is actually not recommended. And I'll tell you why. Because too much graphite on your canvas may cause problems for the adherence of paint. Graphite is very, very smooth. It has to do with the structure of that pigment. And uh, actually people use it instead of oil, you know, for screws and things like that to make it very smooth. So take care with that. Better not do like this, but just use the lines to make uh, your first drawing on your canvas, right? But instead of pencil, graphite, you can also use charcoal. I've got a nice piece of willow charcoal here. And um, with the charcoal, like with uh, pencil, you can start making a drawing in line. Now, with charcoal, also try to keep it simple. Do not put on too much charcoal, because, let me show you what happens. I put on also here a lot of black. And now when we start painting, oh, I thin it a little bit with water. Yeah. And you will see that the charcoal actually pollutes your color a whole lot. You see, it gets grey, dirty. This is the clear paint. You see, there's a lot of pollution grey here. In the paint from the charcoal. So do not put on too much charcoal. Or, you gotta treat it in another way. After making the drawing with the charcoal, just use a wet brush with some water and wash your charcoal with water. In this way you can make a nice shadow and a light thing. But you gotta wash it everywhere, otherwise your colors get dirty. Now let it dry. After drying, the charcoal will not mix with the paint anymore. So that's also a very useful way to use the charcoal, to set up a painting. But you don't need to make a drawing, you can if you want. But we also can start directly with paint. In this case, I dilute my paint with a lot of water, so I don't have much pigment. It's just to set up your composition. And, for example, now you can start making shadows immediately also. going to be a nice little apple. And from here on proceed with thicker paint. Now starting with just a little bit of pigment. And after the evaporation of the water there's so little pigment inside the paint I started with that when I come back with a different color, um, it hardly will pollute another color because there's just a little bit of pigment, you see.
and continue from, from here on. The choice of brush, first of all, is a personal choice. There are several possibilities. <sighs> Me, myself, I prefer bristle, hog bristle I got here, with a filbert shape. Many other people, however, um, they prefer synthetic brushes made of polyester. Got a couple here. Um, what's the difference between using a bristle with Cobra and using synthetic ones with Cobra? Actually, both kinds are suitable to contain a lot of thick paint. You know, it's for rough painting. It's not really for details. The difference is that bristle has the tendency to get re less resilient when using water. That's why I love the filbert and uh, not a, a flat one, because the flat one usually has longer hair and then it gets a little bit too less resilient. The filbert for me works perfectly. Synthetic, on the contrary, are not sensitive to water, whatever. You know, so the, they remain exactly the same. They don't get less resilient. So that's quite personal, actually. Not for details. For details, uh, synthetic ones. Got two small ones here, a dark one, a blonde one. Um, they're very suitable for thicker paint, also to make details. For somewhat thin paint and make real details, like painters would use to make really detailed paintings, red sable is very, very good. It can contain a lot of thin paint and it works really detailed. It comes into a very sharp point when there's paint inside the brush, actually. Now, we should realize that every good brush is handmade. The hair bundle is set by hand, by skilled hands. So, Sometimes they're pretty expensive too, depending on the type of hair and the quality of the brush. So we would like to take actually good care of our brushes. How to take care of your brushes? With Cobra, of course, first of all, you know, they're dirty with paint. Yeah. First of all, rinse them with water. Yeah. But there's still a little bit of paint, grease, oil inside the brush. Um, to really take care of them, we're going to wash the brush with soap. So if you join me, we'll go to the sink. So we're going to wash our brush with uh, water and soap, preferably look water. We've got to take care to do not burn my hands. This water is very hot here. Add some cold, right. And in this case, I will wash with a uh, special Cobra soap, but uh, actually any mild kind of soap will do. And then what we do, wet it a little bit, wash the brush, like this, rinse it, and we repeat this until the foam of the soap is completely clean. Normally I would say until it's completely white, but this is black soap and the foam is not white, it's grey. But you will see when the foam is completely clean. Get out, get rid of the soap. Get rid of excessive water. Dry it. And we're going to leave the uh, brush flat on the table to dry. Okay guys, hope you liked it for today. Uh, next episode uh, will be about painting techniques a la prima and painting in layers and what comes to it to get it done in the right way. See you next time.